On top of having PCOS, I also have androgenetic alopecia. Say that three times fast. Which pretty much means I have hereditary female pattern baldness. So I come from a long line of stingy edge heifers. What's up? It's your girl, Danisha Renee, and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a little bit different. So yes, we will be talking about hair. We will have a hair review, but we'll also be having a discussion about female hair loss, bow heads, stingy edge assassin. So something that many of you may not know about me is that I have been diagnosed with PCOS, uh, which stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. I actually got my first diagnosis of PCOS when I had a real job and got to go to a real doctor at age 22. But the very first time I learned about PCOS was watching an episode of Oprah when I was home one day from school when I was about 14 years old. And I remember telling my mom after watching the episode, there's this thing called PCOS, I think I have it. And she was like, girl, you don't know what you're talking about. Go sit down. Look, mom, turns out I actually had PCOS. Um, and so it has a bunch of different symptoms, being overweight, higher risk of depression, excessive hair growth where you don't want it, hair loss, thinning of the hair, depression, just lots of fun things involved in having a diagnosis of PCOS, but it's actually a lot more common. One in four women actually have polycystic ovarian syndrome with varying symptoms. I know people who have it in terms of what their actual hormone levels are. They've been diagnosed officially by their doctors, but they're asymptomatic, so they don't show any symptoms, so God bless them. So what I wanted to really discuss today is some of the effects in terms of hair loss, and I wanted to, of course, make it a little bit fun and show some of the products and ways I mask my hair loss and still get to wear some of the fun styles. So if you follow my channel, you already know I wear lots of wigs and so I, I like wigs. And part of why I do that is to combat the increasing hair loss that I'm experiencing the, or, the older I get. On top of the fact that I really just love wearing wigs and I have for a long time. But a lot of times I wouldn't wear ponytails and things like that. And when you have thinner edges, it makes it more difficult. On top of having PCOS, I also have androgenetic alopecia. Say that three times fast. Which pretty much means I have hereditary female pattern baldness. So I come from a long line of stingy edge heifers. Okay. And when I say it's not just thinning edges, like my grandmother, great grandmother, great aunts, by the time they were in their 60s and 70s were bald. So I got some things <laughs> potentially coming for me in the future. So I'm just going to show you what I'm really working with. So this is my hair washed and blow dried. And that's it. I washed it, I blow dried it, I put a little bit of uh, serum, a little bit of moisturizer in it so it doesn't dry out because I have naturally thin, I have very thin hair. And I, I've worn really short styles. At one, and, and again, the older I get, the more dramatic the symptoms and the thinning of my edges that I notice. Um, because a few years ago, I first cut my hair really short, probably, uh, about eight years ago and it, it seemed very full and, and like lustrous and all of that and then I cut it again maybe five years ago and then I did it again two years ago really really short and I could not maintain the short length because 
when I cut it really short and I'll put a picture, it looked really cute the day I got it styled. I realized how much hair loss I experienced and I wasn't able to maintain that short style um, and not look crazy, okay? So it's not only my edges that it's happening, but I'll let you see. Oh, y'all are getting an in-depth look because I'm gonna be letting nobody see my hair like this, okay? Just the millions of people across the world. See, it, it's really, so it's about having, and in, again, you may not be able to tell, as I get older, I notice, look, I'm noticing like how wide my parts, oh, there we go, <laughs> that's a good spot, I'm noticing how wide my parts are getting, and you know what was so funny? So I was in my friend's wedding this past August and the style that she wanted us to have was a ponytail. And I remember going to the stylist and people had these like, it was a side part swoop. And I remember her looking at me and I said, oh yeah, I got, I ain't got no edges. Um, we probably should have discussed that. She was like, oh yeah. Was that? So she had to like glue a little track. I was like, girl, you make it work. Okay. I do every day. So... We can see that's happening. And I wear my hair in a ponytail very often, oftentimes a braid. Um, I, lately, I've been wearing my hair in an Afro puff, which I think a lot of people thought was my natural hair. It is not. It's a, it's a faux puff. Um, and it comes down here, so it normally covers my edges. So oftentimes, I wear that because I can put it on and not have to do a lot. I actually need to cut my ends is what I'm seeing. But I'm going to show you all how I go about putting my hair in a high pony and giving myself some edges. So. Okay, so the first thing I do is use my grease. I have my good old fashioned Blue Magic coconut oil and I make fairly large parts and make sure that my scalp is moisturized, especially because it's gonna be in a ponytail for a few days. I then use my Eco Styler Olive Oil Gel just to get it slicked up into a ponytail. Not too much because my hair is naturally curly and I don't want it to start to revert. After I put my hair in a ponytail, I braid that hair up into a nice little um, closed braid knot just so that it's out of the way when I attach my ponytail. I then use my Topic hair fibers. This is the secret y'all. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's almost like putting dirt on your head, but it helps fill in all those blank spots of the scalp. Uh, you put it in as you need it. You can build, so don't do too much at one time. I then go in with my freeze spray to lock everything in, and now I'm just going to get into my ponytail Maya um, that I am using as my ponytail for the day and I'm just okay so this is the final look okay I love this little I dream a genie ponytail it's super light and I love me a good high pony a good high pony I almost feel like I could have put it higher because like when I lift my head just when I tilt my head regularly it's high but I feel like I could have put it like Bam, maybe next time. But I love a good high pony. I'm actually going out tonight for my friend's birthday and the theme is like cute and girly. So this is very cute and girly. Um, I don't normally wear these types of ponytails. I will do lots of curly, like nat natural texture curly puffs or something very structured. So this is fun. I probably haven't worn a ponytail like this in the some time but I'm really feeling this a lot it's definitely been a few years but I enjoy this a lot so again you saw some of the products that I use and if you see my edges you see how much these little topic hair fibers I there are a miracle for me I love these so much um I got them in a black a color of black um, because even though my natural hair is probably in a color two, a, a very deep, deep, dark brown, it's like an off black. Once I put all the product in it, it gets black. Um, and again, you want to be very careful when you're using hair fibers. You don't want to look like a shoe black. And I will say they fade over time. Like if you sweat, which is why I like to put the hairspray, the free spray to keep it in place. But like people always wonder like, doesn't that rub off? Nope. It doesn't. Now, I still have a little leftover from when I was putting it on, but it doesn't rub off. It doesn't rub off, 
and you actually don't need a lot now if you put a whole bu bunch it will look very like black but you have to think about hair and oftentimes we have hair you could see, at least for me right you can still see that my hair is thin in spots but it is so much better than how it naturally is because i work out a lot now it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to like put too much because i sweat a lot and it's not even that this will mess up because i sweat in my face and then i do a lot of this so this is cute but it's actually honestly it's really good for working out because the with the hair with the got to be it it this ponytail is up until i change it and the best thing about it is I can take this ponytail off and still maintain this style until it's time to wash it. So again, the ponytail is Maya. I forgot to tell you who it was by. That was rude. Sensational. It's from their Lulu Pony line. Again, this is Maya in the color 1B. I love Sensational Little Ponytails. They have some really interesting, uh, to me, like quintessential black girl in the 90s ponytails with sensational so i'm really feeling that so thank you guys for sticking around with me for this video that was a little bit different i plan on having a few more videos to have conversations about what it's like living with pcos how i combat some of the other symptoms like weight gain um depression and all the other things that come with living a life with pcos and androgenic alopecia if you like this video, please make sure you tell me so in the comments below so that I know that you want more of this type of content. Thank you guys again for coming. Until next time, bye.